be interpreted by a lay person differently. Clear and convincing evidence is must produce in your minds a firm belief of conviction about the facts to be proved or the truth of the matter. That's the civil standard versus if after a full and impartial consideration of all the evidence you are firmly convinced of the truth of the charge relating to defendant, then the state has proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt. So I think those, it's basically saying clear and convincing evidence to me is almost exactly the same thing as firmly convinced. And I don't see how a jury lay people could make that distinction and I think it confuses them and is contrary to the jury instructions. Well, I do understand your position. Unfortunately, we do have to deal with a lot of legal jargon and tech, uh, terminology that does have set and fixed definitions. It is widely recognized as a principle of law as a matter of law that there are in essence three different standards in terms of evidentiary burden, uh, preponderance of the evidence, clear and convincing evidence, proof beyond reasonable doubt. Those are three distinct legal standards with three different definitions. And I certainly understand your argument that the terminology that comes straight from OJI about being firmly convinced. I can understand your position that it might cause confusion amongst juries, and unfortunately that's where the litigation aspect of the closings come into to play at. I am not going to prohibit the defense from accurately representing that this, the, the, the clear and convincing evidence as a legally defined burden of proof would be insufficient here. So I, I do note your comments. That would be my ruling on the use of that object. All right, thank you. Okay. Anything else we need to address on the record? I, I, before we, Ms. Wilson, do we have all the jurors somewhere? You go check. Um, I emailed revised jury instructions and verdict forms to all the parties. Uh, we can go ahead and journalize and memorialize on the record some changes that have been made and maybe any other issues that you folks want to raise that I can obviously work on if I need to make any more changes while the closing is going on. But anyway, just to uh, reflect uh, some of the items that were discussed last night in chambers, the court wants to point out the following uh, changes that were discussed and to my knowledge agreed to. On page three, the court did include the instruction under evidence for learned treatise. The next change was on page seven, where I removed the uh, paragraph about hypotheticals. After consult, uh, consultation with the attorneys back in chambers, we were all in agreement. There was no testimony where any expert offered any type of opinions surrounding hypotheticals, so I, I struck that as not being applicable. As to count one, child endangering, I did add the lesser included offense. Um, that one took me a little more time than usual just because the identity of the offense is similar, actually other than the code section, it's identical to the charged offense. So I wanted to make sure that I tried to word it in such a way that it was as that it would reduce any confusion as much as possible to the jury reviewing that. So I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to review the lesser included uh, instruction that I gave or if anybody has any comments about it. I, the defense has no comment, thank you. Stay. To be fair, I hadn't reviewed it. No, that's fine, go ahead. Okay, thank you. It's not that extensive. I mean, it was taken based off the OJI, obviously. I just tried to tailor it to, again, make the wording as clear as possible given our circumstances here. While Ms. Hiley, you're doing that, I'm also going to note that pursuant to the agreement of the attorneys, on count one, I did change the definition. So I, I added a definition for torture pursuant to the Wainwright suit. I added a definition for cruelty, uh, cruelty again, based on the Wainwright decision. And I used the definition of abuse that was also given in the 12th District Lane Right decision. So I wanted to generalize that motion. All right, and um, so uh, all the parties on the record particularly are clear on verdict form one that uh, necessitated that I add a paragraph at the bottom that states as, as follows if your verdict is not guilty, Proceed to verdict form 1A, which verdict form 1A is on the lesser included offense. 
If your verdict is guilty, this is on verdict form one, disregard verdict form 1A and proceed to verdict form two. And then as I stated, verdict form 1A is a new form, uh, having found defendant not guilty as to count one, we the duly panel jury as to the lesser included offense, and then it's got the change of the statutory number, you find the defendant not guilty of guilty. So that's how I handled that on the jury instruction. Uh, Mr. Pagan, is this the opportunity you, or is this the time that you would like to have the opportunity to address the uh, accident instruction? Well, I think the court has um, supplied the parties, I believe, with the uh, Jones decision out of the 12th district, and I take from that that the court's disinclined to provide an accident uh, instruction based on that. So the record is, uh, is, is clear. Uh, we did have this discussion. Mr. Pagan did bring to my attention, I believe it was OJI 421.01, which is an accident instruction. Uh, the uh, Jones case that Mr. Pagan is referencing, and I apologize, I didn't want to bring the cases out here, so I, I know you guys have copies of it. It's 2015 Ohio 5059, is that what it was? 5029. 5029, thank you. Which is a 12th district case, controlling case, obviously, in a situation virtually dead on point. The offense involved there carried a reckless standard. The 12th district said it was inappropriate to give that instruction because the instruction does revolve around the purpose standard. And so based on that controlling decision, uh, yes, Mr. Pegg and I am going to be disinclined to give that instruction. Having read this and really reviewing the other law, I think I would concede that the uh, concept or principle of accident is subsumed in the mens rea element of recklessness and that accident is uh, more uh, inclined for cases that have a higher mens rea. So all right. we'll, we'll withdraw on that request. Count two, I don't think there was any changes or discussions on. Count three, I did tweak that pursuant to our conversations with the special finding. Um, I don't know if the parties had a chance. I, I actually, for this big, I apologize, my brain was kind of, you know, last night. Yeah. So it took me a little while to kind of digest what you were trying to say about that paragraph. I think I tried to, I, what I did was try to simplify it to incorporate what your comments were while accomplishing what I think the legal standard is, so I don't know if the parties have had a chance to review that. But basically for the special finding, and uh, so the record is clear, this is that section of the, the statute that says the uh, level of offense is elevated if there's a finding of serious physical harm. Which I have ruled, at least back in chambers, and I'm putting the ruling on the record, that is not actually one of the statutory elements, it's an enhancer, much like felony domestic violence. Therefore, I don't find it appropriate to include any elements but obviously a jury still has to find it beyond reasonable doubt, so I've included it as a special finding. Anyway, so the uh, paragraphs, two paragraphs in their entirety state as follows. If you find defendant guilty as to count three, you must then determine if the state of Ohio has proven to you beyond a reasonable doubt that the commission of count three resulted in serious physical harm. If you do not find defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt as to all the elements of count three, you will not make this determination. If the state of Ohio has proven to you unanimously, beyond reasonable doubt, that the commission of count three resulted in serious physical harm, that must be your finding. If the state of Ohio fails to prove such to you beyond a reasonable doubt, or if you cannot reach an agreement on such, then you must find the commission of count three did not result in serious physical harm. You will mark this finding on a separate special finding verdict form associated with count three. So that's the verbatim wording as I currently have it. Either party wish to comment on that word. Defense is satisfied. No. Okay. Um, count four, the involuntary manslaughter. As to element six, I did maintain the language, but I, I feel that somewhere the instruction has to be given as to the statutory element of approximate result of committing a felony offense. Now, in addressing some of the other issues that were brought up in chambers, when you get to underlying offense, and I'll read this verbatim as well. Count four is based on the allegations that are subject to count three. If you find defendant guilty of count three and, and I've got that all capitalized, and find beyond reasonable doubt that the commission of count three resulted in serious physical harm, you must accept as a matter of law that count three is a felony offense to satisfy element six in count four. If you find defendant not guilty of count three above, you must find defendant not guilty as to count four. If you find defendant guilty as to count three above, but do not find beyond a reasonable doubt that the offense charged in count three resulted in serious physical harm in the special finding count three, you cannot find defendant guilty as to count four. 
think that's clear and it's an accurate recitation of the law. And the only, yes, I agree. The only thing I noted on that page is that there are some things bolded and other things not. And I don't know if that's intentional on behalf of the court. What's bolded? So cause, other causes, not a defense. Underlying offense are bolded, but natural consequences and Oh, oh okay. Well, let me explain. But at least this is why I do it. Okay. Natural causes being unbolded on page 15 is because natural consequences is a concept that is contained in cause. Okay. When I bold them, that means I'm separating thing. out the cause or the uh, the concepts. Okay. So if you see something there that's capitalized but not in bold, that's because it is still part of the other paragraph above it. That's the only reason. I mean, Thank if anybody you. feels there's any prejudice to that. I didn't see any issue. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. And now it was not a typo. If if no one feels finds there's any prejudice to it, that that's just how I always do it. I have no position. Okay. Count five, the endangering children. Once again, we have that issue with the serious physical harm. I literally cut, cut and pasted the special finding language. I just changed count three to count five, so that verbiage is exactly the same as what we just discussed in count three. And then count six, murder. Again, as to element six, I did leave in there, because again, I do feel that the jury must be at some point instructed that it has to be an approximate result of committing a felony offense of violence in the first or second degree. I do have in there two with child endangering in count five, so they can't confuse it with any other child endangering counts. Underlying offense, I've given them the same type of instruction, that if they find the defendant guilty of count five and find beyond reasonable doubt that count five resulted in serious physical harm, they must accept as a matter of law that count five is a felony offense of violence of the second degree to satisfy element six in count six. That way, the attorneys don't have to spend a whole lot of time trying to argue and explain that to them. They're instructed to accept that as a matter of law, which my understanding was that both parties were in agreement that that's an appropriate way to handle it, and so that's how I have handled it. I agree. Uh, just some other changes then on the verdict forms reflecting what I've done. Verdict form two is completely unchanged. Verdict form three. And because I do have the special verdict form three about the serious physical harm claim. Verdict form three says if your verdict is guilty, proceed to special verdict form three to determine if the offense resulted in serious physical harm. If your verdict is not guilty, ignore special verdict form three and proceed to verdict form four where you must enter a verdict of not guilty. I believe that is illegally, they cannot convict on form on the verdict on the count four if they find a not guilty as to count three. So I thought that that instruction on the verdict form was clear and uh, eliminated, or hopefully hopefully eliminated, but at least greatly reduced, any possibility of a conflicting verdict. So does either party have a problem with how I can do that? I think it's accurate and clear. No. Okay. The special verdict form three, I basically have added the same type of instruction on the bottom. Proceed to verdict form four. If you found the offense did not result in serious physical harm, you must enter a verdict of not guilty on verdict four, form four. Same rationale. Without the finding of the serious physical harm, the child endangering is not a felony. It cannot be a predicate for the involuntary manslaughter. So everybody's in agreement with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, form four, the involuntary manslaughter is I just simplified that verdict form to a not guilty, guilty. I took out all that other stuff that I had in there before. I think all the parties stipulated, or not stipulated necessarily, but opined that they thought that that was appropriate given the way we're handling the other instructions and the way the other verdict forms read. So anyone have any objections about that? No, it's clear. No. Okay. Verdict form five and special verdict form five, again, a cut and paste, just exactly like I handled uh, count three and verdict form six, the murder, ditto, just basically the same as verdict form four, simplified it to just not guilty or guilty. So everybody good with that? Yes. Yeah. All right, so as I understand it, we have agreements as to the jury instructions <coughs> and the verdict forms. Uh, Ms. Hiley, just so I know what I can tell the jury when they come in, will the state be calling rebuttal witnesses? No. So we will, uh, do you folks need a few more minutes just to get yourself? geared up mindset organization for closing arguments? Yes. Okay. Do we want that uh, turned around? I was going to turn it, Your Honor. Well, I'll this Thank you. Do that. Uh, okay, let's give everybody about five, ten minutes. Uh, let's try to get started no later than ten after nine so we can get this to them as, as uh, 
efficiently as possible. We'll go off the record, Ms. Wilson. I'll get these to Melinda so she can get them copied. And uh, we'll reconvene in about 10 minutes, okay?